Department of Justice officials will be in a handful of counties in the Carolinas tomorrow to make sure voting rights are properly safeguarded. Mecklenburg County will be one of them. The agency says officials will be there to receive any complaints about discrimination and lack of accessibility. And we know there have already been 15 reports of voter intimidation in the state. For the most part, our um, most egregious situations have been in the electioneering area, uh, either between campaigners themselves or um, in in that you know their approach towards voters um, we've had a few situations involving uh, interactions with our election officials that comment led to wcnc charlotte doing some digging of our own and vanessa you have more with a verify fact check yeah that's right fred so we kind of looked into a bunch of things first you might have noticed maybe around town some election signs that talked about numbers to call if you run into any voting problems and so it's important to note that one of these signs which you see here it actually has a phone number it traces back to democracy nc it's a voting rights group which claims this number as a hotline to answer registration questions and voter concerns we should mention this is not a government agency by the way that particular sign there over on West Boulevard out by Billy Graham. So we wanted to fact check also these intimidation red flags and who you really should be contacting with concern. So our sources here, the North Carolina State Board of Elections and also the Department of Justice. First, it is important to know what is allowed at a polling site. And so we should tell you at least on the outside. So outside a polling site, anyone can observe, but as long as they are outside a buffer zone, and that's usually going to be around 50 feet from the entrance of the polling site, and it should be pretty clearly marked. Now, folks out here can also hand out materials. They can talk to voters and they can conduct polling. Now, they cannot stop anyone from entering the site, and they also cannot enter if they are not there to vote. Now, each political party can assign an observer to be inside. So here's what's allowed inside by those observers. Those folks can be stationed close enough to hear voters checking in, but not close enough to block people or see any confidential information. They can take notes, but they are not allowed to take pictures, video, or record audio without permission. And then as far as what they can't do inside, they cannot wear or hand out campaign material. They cannot talk to voters or voter assistants, and they cannot enter the voting booth area or approach voting equipment. So if you think that you are a target of voter intimidation, or if you just have any general concerns about what you're seeing at a polling place, there are a few things you can do. The first would be to notify an elections official at your site if you're there in person. The DOJ says anything involving violence, threats of violence or intimidation at a polling place is worthy of a 911 call. The DOJ also has a way to report civil rights violations online. That website is civilrights.justice.gov slash report. We do have that information on our website, by the way. And if you do need to head to the polls tomorrow, hopefully we won't be seeing lines as long as in years past. And that's because many folks have already cast their ballots. We're seeing in North Carolina, 29% of registered voters already speaking, whether it be through absentee or early voting. And that figure 16 and a half percent of those registered voters in South Carolina. Very important information.